Hello guys and welcome to another sculpting tutorial. In this one, I want to do something a little bit more technical. We're going to try to show you a workflow that can be used for posing the character. Okay. Now, it's always a debate like, like when do you post the character? How do you post the character kind of thing? Uh, and I don't. I think everyone has a different workflow. So uh, here, I want to try to introduce a workflow that's um, relatively non-destructive and also um, able to go back and forth, right? So one thing you want to be sure is that you have uh, subdinner levels, for example, for this hair, right? It's, it's dense, but you can take a look at the subdinner level. You can see I can go to a lower level, right? Okay, otherwise your performance wouldn't be good enough. Okay, you can keep it as the highest if you want. Resistance here, I don't even subdivide it yet. Uh, I haven't even done that yet, but that can be done anytime, okay? Um, so don't worry too much about that. Okay. All right, and also for any symmetrical part you want to finish already. For example, the boots are symmetrical, so you kind of want to do that first. I don't have anything here yet. <laughs> so um, you wanted to finish it, of course. But again, you can have subdivision levels if you wanted to. There's no problem on that. But just don't leave a high resolution data mesh in there. That's, that wouldn't work. Uh, for example, the body, as you can see, there is a subdivision level in there, right? There's not much detail, but I have something scattered here just to show you uh, that this can be transferred over no problem. Okay, the first step you want to go for is to go to Z plugin, Transpose Master, and you click on the Transpose Mesh. Okay, uh, let's then go to the lowest subdivision level for all your models and then put them together into a temporary model. Oops, I think the shoulder patch is flipped direction now that it was. I need to fix that. So I'm going to delete, delete this guy. Let me fix that real quick. Okay. So this guy, this guy is flipped. So let me flip it real quick. All right. All right, let me try that again, right? So uh, it's up to uh, Z plugin, right? And then Tibo's mesh. This one gave me a low res model, right? For the geometry again. Right. Okay, now you can see, right, everything is on the lowest of the level. Okay, you need this to have good enough performance. All right, and then we're, we're gonna get this thing out. So we'll go to the export, turn off the GRP, and then export. Okay, I'm gonna put it into the download folder. I'm gonna call this guy to Mixmo. Okay, and save that. Okay, I'm gonna use Mixmo Auto Rig to rig it, and then we'll transfer that into Maya and do the posing in there. So now I'm gonna go here to Mixmo. This is gonna be an online website from Adobe. You can basically register for a free account, and then you're able to open it like this. Okay, um, if you have an Adobe account already, it has to be a personal account, so your school account wouldn't work, right? You have to, to use a, a personal one. Just go ahead and register, right? And then you log in and you'll get something like this. Okay. And then what you do is you click on this upload character. Okay. And then you go select and you select the one, okay, here that we export it. That's going to take some time to go through the whole process and load it. Uh, let me pause the video until this is finished. All right. So once it's loaded, it's going to show you a preview of the model. If there's no problem, we can go move on to the next. And just move those various things based on the uh, the placement marker here, right? This is the chin, and then we'll have the wrist, probably in there. Go, you can go to the other side if you wanted to be more precise. Elbow. Oh, that's the wrist. So I put it in here. Oh, this is the wrist. Sorry, this is the elbow. This is the wrist. Okay, wrist will be. Yeah, placed in here, elbow, and then knees should be in there, and groin. Uh, this is in there, so we probably need to go a little bit higher here. Right, and then you can check on next, and that's going to go through the process of rigging, and it's going to go calculate the model, uh, calculate all the skin weighting and everything, and this is when like you really want to be careful about the model polycount. You want to keep it low enough. That's why we need to go to the lowest subdivision level. 
right? Or we have something level, right? When we when we're doing the T pose, uh, it's gonna automatically do that low res model, uh, automatically reduce it to the lowest subdivision level. Oops, uh, have some marker not on the character. Uh, that's weird. Okay, uh, let me try that again. <laughs> Maybe this one needs to be higher, has to be on the model, but I think those are all on. This is the first time that happens to me. So give it some more time. Um, maybe one more try. Yeah, so you want to keep your model to the lowest subdivision level possible. Okay, if you don't do that, then uh, it's gonna take forever to rig it because you'll have a lot of polygons. Even, you know, things that, that feels really light in ZBrush may become too heavy for this. So you're gonna have to keep the polygon low. Um, oops. Um, I guess <laughs> I need to go back and redo this. Maybe. Uh, is there any way to refresh it? There must be something that I didn't do right. Uh, not sure what that is. Can I refresh it? Hmm. Let me just re, re upload it. There might be something wrong. I'm, I'm not sure what that is. Um, maybe I, I crossed the, the side or something. <laughs> so let's try this again. Because uh, this is actually the first time this happens to me. I've done quite a few characters with it. Okay, let's give it some more time. All right, so one more time. Let's keep on going. Next, chain goes to here. Wrist goes to here. Elbow goes to here. Knees. And then that. <laughs> Give this one more try. Okay. Alright, let me pause the video. This may take a while. Alright, this time it went through nicely. And it takes like two minutes or so. Right, you can see now the model is in preview mode and everything looks fine right and we can hit next and that's going to load our model now as the model being previewed in here okay and then we can you know we don't really need to use any of the animations but you're, you're more than welcome to try that right? there's no problem on that um, but you know you, you can just get this thing out to to maya now okay can probably steal one of the poses looks really cool mm. This one, right? And maybe, yeah, that should be fine. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check on that to lock it, lock it in there, right? So that way, it's not gonna um, doing any uh, offset on the root. And then, right, we can then download this FBX 30 frame per second skin with skin, right? And then download. Okay, this will download the model with the animation in there. Right, that's when you can use any software, not just Maya or whatever software you're familiar with to load this FBX. One thing to be aware of is that if you're using Blender, you may have to deal with a size issue because Blender doesn't load the uh, FBX quite well yet. You have to be aware of that. Uh, I'm gonna use Maya in this case because that's the, the software I'm mostly familiar with. But you, you're more than welcome to choose other other package as long as they can read FPX. Even Unreal Engine can do that. <laughs> you can load it in Unreal Engine, create a post in there. I guess that would work too. Yeah, that would definitely work. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna go to File, Import, and then I'm gonna import uh, that standing dodge backward. Okay, this will load the model with the rig and animation all in there. Okay, like this. Okay, you can see now there is a join structure in there. I can turn on the join skeleton preview. Okay, uh, or X ray for joints. Display uh, animation join size will allow you to change the size of the joints. So I can change that to something like 0 0.05 to make them look smaller. I think I want them to be even smaller. Right, okay, and you can see all the joints are there, including the fingers. 
Okay. Now, of course, if you don't like this pose, you can go grab the model and go to um, rigging and skin. There is a go to band pose to go back to the banding pose, and you can pose it yourself in whatever way, whatever way you want, right? To have the model pose. But basically, you can now post this in Maya, right? Quickly. Now, of course, there's no controllers, right? It's not a fancy rig at all. But for the purpose of posing the character, this is perfect, right? And this is lightweight, and you don't have to spend a lot of time tweaking anything. It's having the basics there already. Okay. So let me go to that pose I like. I like to go for maybe this pose, right? It's moving too far away from the center. I can probably drag it back. Right, and then uh, I can even do some more tweaking here. Like I, I don't like how those vertices are going away from each other. I can go for average vertex to even out their location. Whatever you can do with modeling, you can do them in here. Uh, there's no problem on that. You can probably create a blend shape to fix those things. Right, right. By doing that, we're okay, using the sculpting tool. Oh, well, this model has some issues. I can't do that. <laughs> All right, well, I have to accept this. Anyway, so let's say this is, a, this is the pose I want. Then I can just grab the model and go for File, Export Selection. I can call this guy to ZBrush Pose. Okay. Now back here to ZBrush, I'm going to go to uh, Layers and then create a new layer. Call this one. Pose zero one dodge right with the rec re recording mode on. I can then go back here and import the uh, to the batch pose. You can see now the pose is loaded. Okay, now in here again I can do my tweaking. Maybe in here it could be easier. <laughs> right, wherever you want to put to tweak it, right before you transfer over, you can do that. So I kind of wanted to smooth that stretching effect because we don't want to deal with waiting. We're not animating this, so as long as our pose will look good eventually, we don't worry about having to, you know, really get a perfect waiting just for one pose to work. Right, we can work smart and ignore all those uh, redundancies. Right, and this is still going to be faster than trying trying to use a bunch of Z spheres to rig the character for sure instead of the brush. Okay. Oh, not do that. Okay, so just do some more tweaking here, just to make them nice and even. Because you kind of want this to to be tweaked before you transfer back. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of stretching on those things, especially when you have some details copied already. In there. Okay, and I believe this guy is underneath, so I can push it in by using move topology code or push that out, <laughs> whatever you want to do. So there will be tweaking needed, but the point is we 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 wanted to be able to tweak it, right? And also we wanted to avoid having to deal with any technical things as little as possible in this case. Right. Let's say this is this is okay now. We're happy with what's going on, and then we just need to get this thing back to that high resolution sculpt, and that should be an easy step. We just need to go for here, Z plugin and T pose back this up to. Okay, and that's gonna update the model into that pose we defined. Okay, I have a skeleton inside actually. <laughs> Right, you can see now everything will be able to transfer over without any problem. And then we can keep on working from this post. Right, that's going to be the general idea here. Now at some point, let's say, okay, I wanted to add more details symmetrically on the face now. There are two options. One is you can, in the, in the transform, you can activate symmetry, you can use postable symmetry. Right, should be able to allow it to to do that, <laughs> it's going to check the topology, of course, right? If it's symmetrical or not, then you can do it, right? That's one thing if you you if you want to try, right? To add symmetrical uh, effect like this. Okay, let's try here. You can see, yeah, this is not bad at all, right? That's one thing. 
And alternatively, if you want to say, okay, I oh something wrong in there. If, if you want to say, okay, I really want to go back to that original pose that I want, I was working on before, you can't. So what you have to do is go back to this guy, and then there is a layer, right? That's why we have the layer. We can zero out the layer, and that's gonna bring it back to the original pose, right? And that can still be transferred over back to use the T pose to sub two, and now we'll go back and then transfer the pose back. So now you basically have the two poses, right? Your original sculpting pose, right? Your original symmetrical pose, and then your new pose. Uh, you can always go, go back and forth between those two poses while you're sculpting and adding more details. All right, that's gonna be the basic idea of this uh, symmetrical or non-destructive way to get things back and forth uh, and to have the pose. And of course, right, other packages like Blender, you can try that. One of the problems I'm having with Blender while trying to do this, because in Siri, it should have, should have been worked. Uh, if you can rig everything in Blender using auto rig in there, that's also fun. I uh, use the rig, rigify, but it doesn't really place the joint for you automatically, right? Um, however, you can try that, you can import. The problem I'm dealing with is that this can be imported. The problem is the model is really small. If you compare this model to the model we exported to Maximo, right? That's the model we put into Maximo. You can see how much bigger this is, right? Compare that. <laughs> so this wouldn't work nicely. Okay, if you get this this model in, let's see. Get this guy in, right? And uh, file export. You probably want to make it like ten times bigger or something. I don't know. So if we export this as OBJ, and you need to choose Z forward, right? Geometry. We have to keep vertex order. Uh, maybe scale. I don't know. Let's keep it as one, but maybe you want to change it like two hundred times bigger. Maybe ten times bigger. Let's try that. And then export object, object to pose from Blender. I don't know what those numbers are for. Okay, now they're gone. So back here to Zbrush, let's go back to our two pose. Uh, just to be safe, I'm gonna create a new layer and name it Blender pose. Okay, and then import that. Can see it changes to something real small. Oh, and also I have that. I don't want that either. <laughs> Control Z. Uh, right. The problem. The problem was uh, I'm exporting everything. So I'm gonna grab that and export OBJ and select it only. That should be. It. To post from Blender, right? Okay, that should transfer over. Let's see if we can receive that no prob without any problem, right? We can't. We're able to do that. It's just gonna get your model into a really small size. If we go back halfway, you can see you know how much we have to change this, right? Of course, this will. I think this will still work though. So we can grab that and then go. T pose to sub two. This can still work, and then it's just gonna transfer everything into a small scale. We'll see, right? You can see the skeleton is here, the body. They're they're able to transfer over, no problem, <laughs> no problem on there. But still, you can see how much different it does make, right? So I I think uh, there's something we need to be aware of when you're using Blender. Seems like there's some clipping in that case. Right. Yeah, I think there's some problem on those things also. It may not be the best solution uh, by using Blender or if you can come up with like the actual solution there just to get the correct size. Otherwise, probably gonna stick with Maya to get a better result. Okay, again, you can always go to different poses. Now I can go back to this pose. 
right? This is the post from Maya. I can transfer it over again. Now be aware that if you want to keep working on this and saving iterations of files, you want to make sure that when you're saving your file, you uh, save it as a Zbash project, not a Z2, because Z2 only saves the tool you're working on, only going to be this guy. You need this guy, right? This guy has all the poses you have. So when you're saving, just press Control S and save it. And yeah, that's 20 minutes of a quick video tutorial on how to post the character quickly, right? Of course, there are things you need to tweak, but this is going to be much faster than using, for example, Z-Sphere, okay? All right, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.